Hello everyone, I am Arjun from the University of Virginia. Today I would like to introduce our work, Fluid Me, enabling frictionless transitions between in-group, between-group and private conversations during virtual breakout meetings. This is a joint effort of my amazing colleague Ashik Azam and my wonderful advisor Sun Ku Ho. Breakout meeting is a type of meetings where small conversation groups are formed and their members are quickly exchanged. Many events and programs, such as poster sessions, workshops, and lectures use breakout sessions to facilitate ad hoc informal conversations. There are many types of conversations during these meetings. For example, in-group members may whisper to each other. They may also overhear and follow other groups' conversation and choose to join one. But what about virtual meetings? There are fewer informal conversations during these meetings because what you say would be broadcasted to the whole group. You cannot know the context of the conversation of other breakout rooms. The transition and boundaries of these meetings are much more static. Proximity-based systems such as gather time may solve this by enabling people to jump into groups when close to each other. However, it creates high friction with additional transition efforts for users. For example, these two users may want to have private conversations, but they will need to move far away from the current group to have it. Moreover, before joining other groups, newcomers may feel hesitant to participate without any conversation context. So, Order Gather provides awareness in some sense, like the orientation movement of avatars. It cannot provide enough level of awareness for the current conversation context. Hence, our goal is to enhance awareness and support fewer transition efforts between conversations. Since it is nearly impossible to imitate the physical encounter, we instead focus on implementing the key features that support these properties of conversation dynamics. Let me explain how we designed the fluidity system. To understand how people utilize the distance in conversations, we review the theories of human-human interaction. Based on these theories, we constructed three design properties, interpersonal distances, cross-group distances, and privacy interaction flexibility. So let's start from the first one. In physical environment, people may construct different distances, so-called proximic theories, which can be intimate distances that allow for a touch or whispers, personal distances that we maintain with strangers, and social distances where we can catch each other's gaze. We suggest forming a nasty conversation structure where users can have their private conversations within the group conversation to facilitate one-to-one -one connections. Here's how we enable it. When the user initiates a private message to a member in the same group, the messages and calls are visualized as colored bubbles called halos in the corner of the receiver's video streams. The halo is visible with short messages on it. In this case, two of the users move closer to the user at a personal distance from the social distance. This scene also shows that user can flexibly transit from personal to intimate distances. When the user gets a private call request, they can either reply to the message or select the camera button on the halo to start a private call. In both users' views, there is an indicator showing that two users are in a private call. Other users can see frozen video of the two users in the private call. Moreover, when two users are in a private call, a user can use the switch handler to switch the mode back to the group conversation without stop the current private call. This shows the fluid transition between the social distance and the intimate distances. Now we've seen what's happening in the within group dimensions. Before joining the group, people may overhear some split words or find something of interest to them. How can we enable these between-group interactions? Here comes our second design property, cross-group distances. In co-present collaborative activities, people often orient themselves in a different spatial arrangement, so-called affirmation. These arrangements can be categorized into either closed or open arrangements. People tend to use open arrangement to send a message to others whether they are open to them joining or not. However, the protected space of F formation does not consider the group's immediate environment. There is a C space that allows outsiders to get the context of the group and allows the group to show their readiness of conversation to the outgroup members. 
similar to the use of C space in the real world, an outsider close to the group will have more awareness of the group's discussion. The group can decide how much information our group members can monitor or perceive from the group with five level conceptual distances on the room panels, which are locked, atmosphere, word cloud, live stream, and public on the top of the Fluidme user interface. Moreover, we enable a room controller to support the transition between these five distances. The outgroup user can also request levels from the group. In this scene, Ashik requests live streaming to the classroom from the menu on the room panel. The request will be shown as a red grid on the room's controller, and with the group's approval, Ashik can now see the live stream from the classroom. As I explained, our system allows people to utilize interpersonal and cross-group distances. But in the real world, these changes in transitions are dynamic and subtle, so it's not something that can be set as a static value because people's needs change by context, time, members, and many other factors. This has been identified by Altman as the privacy regulation theory. In his study, he defined privacy as a dynamic boundary regulation process, and people need to change it frequently as context changes. So here comes our third design priority, privacy interaction flexibility. For example, Fluidme features such as the room controller mentioned before are designed to support the efficient and dynamic control between privacy and the group interaction. We conducted a user study with 16 participants comparing Zoom breakout room with Fluidme to study whether Fluidme enhanced awareness and eased the transitions between conversation modes and to understand the user experience of using it. Our study found that, with Fluidme, the enhanced presence of others' activities offers the transparency of their activity and provides a sense of connectivity. The cross-group distances on room panel imply a conversation potential for our group members with the richness of information resources and awareness. Users also reported that Fluidme reduced the extensive manual and mental effort of switching between breakout rooms with uncertainty. The room privacy management can help control the group size and maintain the efficiency of in-group information exchange. In summary, instead of imitating physical spatial relationships, we use the conceptual distances to optimize the design to enhance the awareness with less friction. With that, I will conclude my presentation and thank you so much for your attention.